Welcome one, welcome all to the NJCAAE Match of the Week presented by ARNG. Shout out to the Army National Guard for sponsoring this. I'm joined here by Shakir. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well, brother. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Ready to hop right into this best of three. It's going to be Ford Scott, the Gaming Greyhounds versus Grays Harbor College. We have a fantastic best of three in front of us. And I am absolutely ready to jump right into it. I do believe I just got word from our producers that we are just going to be heading straight into this matchup as well. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any predictions now that the patch has dropped before this? Uh, before this match, do you think anything we're going to be seeing any new agents as compared to what we're seeing on? Uh, you know the uh, NA qualifiers. Well, I mean, I think the the new patch coming into it definitely changes things up a little bit, but you know, overall. Not a whole lot of changes to really want make you want to use any agents more or less. Maybe a couple uh, here and there, but overall, you know the trend that we've been seeing in the last two weeks with with some of these agents coming in. Uh, I I think that's that's what's going to persist through on. So hopefully we shouldn't see anything too out of the blue here, and and we get a nice a nice easy match for us to cast, but something that's still really exciting and overall new to what we've seen you know months prior. Yeah, I think we're in a really interesting spot in the meta as well, where you saw even in like some of the qualifiers, like I believe it was um, Optic that was experimenting a little with having uh, like Victor on the, on the uh, Neon, things like that. So mm. there's still room for innovation. We can still see a lot of agents come out of left field here, which especially when it comes to the collegiate level, you know, the collegiate teams love their theory crafters. You know, they love to bring some crazy strategies out to the forefront. So I really would not be surprised to see just some completely out of pocket agent selects here and i would love that i love that because the variety is the spice of life it's the spice of the game baby i want to see every single agent used to its fullest potential that being said in we go our first map will be ascent as we already see a ton of hovers here already the jet locked in the sage as well and we may just get ourselves a brimstone if we get a couple of brims on here i'll be ecstatic i do love me a cheeky brimmy so there we go locked in chamber the ko pick as well mm. so yeah a lot more creative than what we probably would have seen about two months ago and that's what i love right this isn't going to be a mirror comp these are definitely very unique compositions and so the strategies that you have to bring in when you're en entering into a sites so those are very different from both teams and also the way that they're defending so there's kind of a lot less that you can predict if you're an opponent because the strategies that you're doing yourself, you can't necessarily anticipate the other team doing those exact same strats. So that's what I love about this and this little uh, sweet spot that we're in as far as these patches go. Like, yeah, there's a couple coming out to slightly refine the meta, but overall, uh, it's still a major change that's kind of taking teams time to innovate and figure out what's really working for them. So that's the nice little gray area we're stuck into right now. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, look at these two team comps. Dude. They're only going to have two agents that are actually mirrored on both sides. It's just going to be the Killjoy and the Brimstone. Other than that, all unique, which is something that we really haven't seen too often since, I mean, the game's release. This is uh, this is one of the first times I've had a majority uh, different team comp on both sides when it comes to the collegiate level. So it's really nice to see that. I'm really excited to see how these two different team compositions can play out against each other. And who, uh, you know, which which uh, which strategy ends up panning out for them a little bit better. Obviously, sometimes it can't just be the aim differences that uh, that make all the difference. But I do like to see some good strategy net a few rounds here and there. You can also see on the Grays Harbor side, right? Two duelists coming out. I guess they're playing very heavily for that attacking side with uh, Gab on the Jet and Tobias on the Reyna. But no duelists on the Fort Scott side of things. I mean, you have Chamber there. So I would, in a lot of cases... You know, I could see the crossover there in terms of being able to be aggression. You have that escapability with your teleport. So in that sense, you still have this very mobile, very aggro agent, but no true duelist on that defending side. So again, probably leaning towards playing this first half. Um, and, and I think looking at this, both teams are looking to win out the first halves and, and use that to limp through to the end rather than picking compositions based for their second half. Yeah, and as we see, already see heavy pressure towards this mid side. Reflex, he's going to have to be tested here. The man on the front lines, he's going to hear a ton of footsteps coming up as well. He's got the traps sprung out for him from the chamber. A lot of damage from the shock charts as well. Two kills, three kills. Not before being traded out, though. It's only a two for three so far. 
All things considered, that could have gone much worse. There are several players all ready to strike as they collect the bomb. It's Sui coming out out of nowhere. Last two players go down. It's a convincing pistol round for Fort Scott. Oh yeah, with three alive carrying into the next as well. So helps you build up that eco buffer. And I really like that because Grace took so much mid control very early on, but Fort Scott, the strategy, they never fully backed out of mid. So even though Grace Harbor got a couple of kills to open the round up, they weren't able to fully secure it because it was this constant flood of players uh, from the Fort Scott side, even pushing the smokes when you at least expect it. So Grace definitely caught out there. Fort Scott reclaiming that mid control and uh, a nice little anti-eco for the second round. Here. Yeah, that chamber trap was so crucial Those there. I mean, they all got stuck in place. The shock dart is out as well. They will line up one as we see Reflex Finest once again. He's back on the front lines. He's going to try and pin them into the corner with that molly. They're cooking a little bit here. Everyone kind of just playing pit for cat, going pitter patter here. But instead, it's all the way of Fort Scott. A flawless round for their second. They're feeling good right now. Yeah, that's that's what you want from your anti-eco, right? If you're Gray's Harbor, you're not expecting to win that. If you can get a kill, two kills, three kills would be phenomenal. None isn't great, but it was just pistols. Um, but Fort Scott have set themselves up for a very nice bonus round here. They got Spectres and full armor for everybody. Their lowest player has 2,200 in the bank. So eco-wise, they're very comfortable. Yeah, really interesting to see them run the same strategy back again after it didn't work the first round. That that one definitely uh I'm with the run it back. There's no Phoenix in here. What's going on? <laughs> I mean, damn, these guys are uh they have some uh they have some real self belief if they want to run that strategy back a third time after being flawless. Key. Oh yeah, I like it. Instead, they're playing this one a little bit more tactical, waiting it out, seeing the cat player, see if he overpeaks just slightly too uh too far forward as acid. Just kind of jump spotting them out. So we caught, we see a quick audible being called here. All of them through CT. They're going to try and quickly shift the momentum of this round and the pacing. They haven't given up any information for Fort Scott either. So you can start to see on the minimap, they're getting a little antsy. Trying to peek extra corners. Begging for any type of information. We're about a minute in and, and they haven't given any. But time is going to start working against them here. And here's one of the difficult things about not having a Sova on this comp is that it's really difficult to get those shock darts out to destroy the nano swarm grenades, to destroy the killjoy utility. Yeah. If they walk out onto yeah. the site and they go right into these nano swarm grenades, this could be disastrous. Out they go. There's the blind from Reyna tucked into the corner. Do they actually know this killjoy's there? Will they check it? It's all about the discipline here. And as they're smoked off, I mean, only 23 seconds left in the round. They have to do something. They have to do it soon. They're running out of time here. And then forced off long enough. Here's the hit. In they go. Acid gets the first. Protecting to the corner. Megalodon. He's got everyone in front of him. He's got the first. The second goes down as well. They're not going to be able to get this bomb down. Seven seconds of the round. And they just get picked apart. 3-0. Fort Scott looking fantastic. What a lineup there at the end for Acid as well. A very beautiful swing behind Generator. I like the change of pace. We talked about... Uh, how they didn't immediately take mid control this time around. And I think the reason they did that in the second round was for this very tactical third round. The issue is they didn't take any space by playing patiently. So you get on to A with 40 seconds to go, but there's so much util there, killjoys there, uh, KOs there, and then the brim smoke comes down right as those nano swarms go out. So there's just no time to set up that hit. And it, you know, you can tell when you're rushing. Oh, this is such an aggressive angle, and he gets domed. That's going to be a gun donated over as well to make matters worse. As it's smoked off, they should have free access to it. Oh, oh, instead, just spammed. Gab gets a second, though. Two sheriffs ring out for headshots already, so the man advantage goes the way of Grey's Harbor. And they picked up a weapon here off the back of that. Pretty handy, all things considered, early on in the round. It was, it's been so difficult for them to crack the defenses, so now that they're able to do this, they have one running out mid. That is risky from Reflex's finest. He's looking to even get one before he goes down, considering he was facing down multiple members there. Still, 2v3. Bombs should be going down here. They do have complete access on the site. Oh, don't do it, Tobias. Was thinking about it for sure. The KO knife will spot out Gab, make sure that there is no abilities to be used there, but already on top of the generator. Are they going to think to clear this one out? Instead, they get a spam oh. headshot. They line up the 3k on the round. Gab secures it in Grace Harbor in the most unlikely fashion. They get themselves back into this game.
Gray's Harbor kind of confuses me here because they lost despite having the weapons advantage in the last round, but this time they come in with pretty much nothing to work with and two pistols, uh, you know, clear out opening kills for them. So that's two weapons picked up. And we saw the impact that had on Tobias in his duel at mid. And then Gab, of course, the 2k up there. So it's these opening kills that they were able to find here. And that's off the back of them kind of peeking. And I think Fort Scott also getting a little overzealous around these angles as well, knowing that they would have the better weapons. But they didn't necessarily have the better angles. Oh, yeah. It's definitely one of those things where if it works out for you, you feel like it's a genius play. And if it doesn't, then you just feel kind of silly. 100%. Yeah. In that case, uh, yeah, they're, they're a little silly. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes in life, you just got to learn your lessons the hard way. So sometimes. Exactly, exactly. As we see, where is this jet at? I think jet is all the way up cat already. That's interesting to see as they spring out onto the B site. Then Ooh. Jet's just playing distracting, going for the flank. They have access here, and they're flooding right now. Reflex is fine, is, is able to get himself around the corner, back to safety just slightly. But Gab activates on the Fight flank. Planted. Two kills as well. Gray's Harbor firing on all cylinders come this round. Do they know that Reflex Finest is right here? This Brimstone is very deep. I think at this point they've got to. With how much control they've given up. But that's a cheeky spot oh, to be hiding in. Now now it's been given up there. Yeah, Gab didn't know. Ended up costing them uh, their life. But I mean, hey, information given over through your death. So not completely invaluable. That was a really clean hit from them, to be honest. They did lose a couple of players there, but... Very clean, and it, it comes off the back of some bad timing from Brucey, the Sova there uh, for Fort Scott, holding down that B site, goes into the Owl Drone, uh, doesn't oh. spot anybody initially, and right as soon as that Owl Drone gets up uh, in towards B main, that's exactly when the push is coming through, so can't quite get out of the drone fast enough, goes down, and that's a wide open site. It's hard to uh, hard to predict that sometimes when your util does the exact opposite of what, what it needs to be, but it's Fort <laughs> yeah. Scott's first, uh, I guess, eco-hybrid kind of round coming into this one. Huh. A bit of unfortunate uh, utility playing out there, but Fort Scott, what is their econ looking like is the question. They've lost two rounds in a row now. Mm -hmm. They didn't exactly have a lot of money to work with come the first three rounds. They might it's... just be on a light by this round. It yeah, looks like it's, it's just pistols. It's the way they've lost uh, these last two rounds as well, right? Despite a very dominant first three rounds. Right here. Uh, they, they haven't lost very gracefully in the last two, so all of the money that they had built up, you know, that bank is pretty much gone. Oh, yeah. And you're seeing a lot of pistols, a lot of specters coming out. Acid, though, does have a Ooh. real weapon. Um, not anymore. Turns out Gab's getting ran down, though. Dead to the shorty with an operator? Oh, that's a disaster. Nice aim now. Trying to take a very forward position. Should hear these footsteps coming up, but Reflex is going to hear nice aim as well. Onto the site they go. They're going to be quickly getting flanked out here, though. Here comes the footsteps. Everyone getting tagged up, but no one getting dropped just yet. Just don't have the weapons for it. The Spectre not the greatest at hitting them long range. Megalodon now waiting to spring through this smoke. Oh, but just spam down. Couldn't even get out in time. 4v3 now. Low HP on a few members. Most of them gotten healed up already. Not giving an inch. No one wanting to let them back onto the site. Just crowding around this generator. But Tobias, he's sitting A main. He's sitting pretty. Trying to get himself back to safety. The headhunter gets one. A game of inches right now. As this rain is pinned in, but it's still a 3v2. And as they try and drop hell, they're just getting eviscerated. No chance. 3-3 three to three now as Grace Harbor mounts the comeback. With Megalodon hiding initially there in wine over towards the A site, it looked like a very dangerous post plan for Grace Harbor because... Fort Scott had the opportunity to kind of pincer in through, but I think that round kind of fell apart when Megalodon got sprayed through the smoke by LHC. That, that could have been a really good opportunity on the on the half buy to really shut him down. Although, that being said, you know, Megalodon with the shorty took down an operator, so when you talk about eco scores, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, value. That's, that's some bonus points for the Killjoy. <laughs> That is value if I've ever seen it. Out comes the Hunter's Fury. One tag is there. Nearly the second. Can't quite find it. Oh, that was so close to tagging three or four at once. But yeah, it could have been very dangerous. Just, yeah, couldn't quite reach there. 
Ooh, really great. Okay. We're getting away with one there. Oh my god, he found it with the shock dart. Yeah, a little bit of redemption, honestly. You know, after missing with the Hunter's Fury, get it with the shock dart. It was just a setup. Oh, but the operator. So that's two. Or three guys down, excuse no, me, on Graves. No, don't do it. Look at this psychopath ready to spring through the smoke. Does he do it with the op? Surely not. Ooh. Just taking a little smoke bath right now. That would have been that would have been terrifying if that dart actually got the scan off. So he would have just been able to free fire out of the smoke. In fact, now they see him here. He's going to hold a tight angle. Very nearly hits it. 15 HP. Just trying to rendezvous out. Gets away with the skin of his teeth. His life is hanging by a thread right now. Now Acid is the next one up to the plate. LHC will be on the front lines instead. Doesn't want to take the fight. We'll just buy time for his teammates to rotate over. They're both trapped the right operator. there. Oh, a 3k on the round. Could just finish it up with four. Only one left. Acid will do him in. Doesn't want to drop the op. They get to keep all that money. Fort Scott now trying to build up that economy again. Yeah, back and forth. Three rounds for Ford Scott, three rounds for three rounds for Grays Harbor. I would say that maybe this could be the start of another three round period for Ford Scott. That'd That's uh, a, a prediction to... out of absolute thin air. There is no <laughs> reasoning to back that up other than it would make the chart there in the middle look very pretty. That's true. That's true. And that's kind of the only the only thing you need for predictions, right? Yeah. Look What's at the... look at the ultimates uh for this one. So four on each Ooh. team. Oh, and a oh, missed shot. Wow, Yikes. that was so unfortunate. LHC actually turns around. I believe he was still facing forward there. He clips his shoulder and maybe even gets a kill there. Would not be surprised. <gasps> Playing with some absolute psychopath tendencies there. Instead, shot out of the sky. Some anti-aerial action there. As Reflex is finest. He's up close and personal yet again. Bruce, he's also spamming through the wall. They are just getting absolutely grinded in the meat grinder. Fort Scott, you're absolutely right. That's two out of three so far. They're looking to get another three-round interval. And this would be the one to do it. The buy is not going to be perfect. Uh, actually, I say that. Yeah, buy is not going to be perfect on the Grays Harbor side either. So they got the Hero Phantom on Tobias. Uh, the Vandal on Zedet as well. But everyone else relegated to these lower tier weapons. And uh, yeah, I think Fort Scott actually could put up an argument for even more because now look at the real bank that they've saved up. 7.3 on their Brimstone. And still four ultimates they're bringing into this round. Grey's Arbor has three of their own though. So now would be the time to use it. Absolutely worth the cost. It looks like they're aware that they could be in the corner. Instead, wow. Megalodon still gets the first kill. Dashed right into his face. But now everyone else on the team is already crowding around him. Going to be able to get the first. Gun able to be retrieved as well. So really taking these early duels, Fort Scott, kind of unnecessary giving away some uh, some you economy here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh there's this one of is going to be a big and it's going to be painful. Brucey sprays him down. Scott, what a combination of oh utility my. and firepower. Yeah, what a way to get up to six to... to to get up to the halfway point of this half. And things are looking very good for Grays Harbor as well, right? You get the one-for-one one trade, but that means way more value-wise for Grays because not everybody has a weapon. So they effectively get the kill. Uh, they take 2,900 away from Fort Scott and then give themselves 2,900 off the back of that. So the value there is so much higher for Grays. Plus then your Sage can get the resurrection off and you're looking at a 5v4 again, but... You got to remember, there's still ultimates on the Fort Scott side. That was a perfect combination. Um, yeah, a, a great round from Fort Scott. A good recovery as well after some silly aggression really shifted the favor uh, towards Grace. Oh, what an angle. This should be a free kill. Cheeky. There's one. He might even peek out for a second as they go to retrieve no. the bomb. They have no idea where they're getting shot from. A second, a third. They Are you know. kidding me? Pepe point, he doesn't know. And he's gone too. How nice aim tell? now. Gonna be the next one to try and recover this bomb, but already two to contest with, and a headshot oh on for the ace. Suey, are you kidding me? I mean, how do you even know that that angle is there? I mean, it's just, you gotta be looking around. You know, where's the Suey's gap? The that, was the, that was the tightest possible angle. Give Suey the ace right now. They're going to right here. Brucey, don't do it. Oh, go. let's go. It's the ace. 
just what the doctor ordered. Fort Scott breaking the three around curse. They're getting four in a row. Grace oh, Harbor, yeah. I mean, they were looking good for a while, but their momentum has just been completely stifled here. That's the challenge, right? When the, in those early rounds, that's really where you have to find the impact because once your opponent settles in economically and can pull out single double op setups um, without risking uh, how their future rounds are going to look like, you know, once they get comfortable in that state, it's very, very tough to break it, especially on a map like this, uh, which can lean defensively uh, at times. So, Gray's Harbor, I think the three rounds that they got, they should be happy with. I'd like to see them get one or two more here with how hot of a start they had. But th that's the risk here. The last six rounds, once you're just seeing Byron's come out, it can get very dangerous. The Hunter's Fury, not a lot of impact before, gets a tag here. And there's the counter uh -oh. with the Brimstone Alt. Just gets out. Pretty even damage being traded, all things considered. But, um... Yeah, definitely the Sova ultimate could have been uh, placed a little bit better there. We'll still get the information with the Owl Drone now. And that's going to cause a quick shift in momentum. Oh, Sui very nearly gets one through the smoke. Instead, he's going to rendezvous out to safety. The guy was already pushed. Megalodon now. Just trying to make it back to the site. Already being shot hot on the heels right now. They're going to have to contest the entire team storming through right now. Acid can't land the first shot. The second one is good, though. He's going to try and peek back out, but it's into the blind. He's taken down a sea of blue in the kill feed. But Tobias, he's doing everything he can to try and claw this back into their favor. Sui is omnipresent, though. That tour de force is singing. As there's only one left, it's all down to Gab. Slowly encroaching on a flank. But, I mean, at this point, they can afford to watch every single angle in the game. Let's the last... find a window here. Okay, hold on. Gab. Ooh. Oh, 13 seconds though. Not enough time. Ten seconds left. One Going for remaining. some consolation. Oh! oh, they line up. Five seconds. He's got to find Bruce. Kill right now. No. He's around the corner. He's got to go for it. Yes. Hit the headshot. Bruce wins it with a classic right click. How often does the classic right click actually end up working in your favor there? Brucey narrowly gets that one to go through. Actually, that, that round there at the end, Gray's nearly pulled it off. There, there was no reason that round should have come down to 20 health. Absolutely no reason. Yeah. <laughs> and literally, they had the round dead to rights. Yep. There was no chance they win if they just, you know, leave one to just run away. Because there's no time to plant the bomb. But, oh man, that was terrifying. See, he's got 14 kills as well in the game. He leads the server. He's got a teammate with 13. So far ahead in terms of fragging. Last round of the half. Ooh, come on, Odin. Ooh, stand through the wall. We do plenty of damage here. <gasps> Odette! Oh, oh poor Brucey Odette. Sniffs it out. Already a 4v5. And look at how low the Sage is. Had to use the heal. Sui just gets another free picking. Oh, they really, Lordy. they like this kind of show presence B and then run through mid, up through cat. They, they've done this three times now. It's only worked for them once. Okay, but yeah, Gab, it on though. Hand Gab's cookie trying to jar. change that. Yeah. They actually do have pretty free access to A, all things considered. Huh. I mean, hard to say why Fort Scott didn't see this coming, but it looks like their retake is just as good maybe they just wanted to flex how good they were at retaking a site because sui does get the first the second goes down brucey gets another brucey gets a third and brucey shall not be denied 12 hp as he gets two more entering the site and that's going to be the ninth round of the half for fort scott bringing this half to a close gray's harbor strung together three rounds that's about all they will get you ever watch finding nemo you don't don't mess with bruce Oh, All yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't do it. Smelling blood. Look at them. Sui and Brucey. 16 kills for both of them. Zodet, unfortunately. Still zero. Big old goose egg. 0 10 and 0. Oh, no. <laughs> not, not what you well, want to see from your killjoy. And then it was even, a defensive nice. sided agent, right? Oh, absolutely. So I, I would not be surprised <laughs> if Zodet comes alive. That's that's the one counter. You know, if you're in the comms saying, Zodet, what's going on? You'll say, look, listen, second half. That's yeah, where I yeah, shine, yeah. you know, but they're going to need to shine here big time, and it starts with the pistol for sure. Oh, yeah. CC-sided players. CC-sided players. Yeah. Here. I mean, that, 
defensive is uh, where this Killjoy shines. But again, I, I think both compositions were picked based off of the first half. Uh, you know, it played more to their strengths, so it's it's not right ideal here. for the Grays Harbor side because they do have two duelists, so they're going to have to be very aggro on defense. And Gab is... Ooh, Zodet actually getting scanned there. That might draw the attention away, but if this drone actually clears the corner, it doesn't. They're not going to check. They're not going to clear this jet right now. If they push, though, I think they've they've backed oh, but away here. Oh, this could here. just be a fake. Gold moves. They're still two at A. Oh, but look at how deep. I didn't even realize how deep Suey is. Wow, a great audible being called. And Suey Whoa. not even looking the right way. Nice aim. Not Whoa. even on the same planet. Suey even gets a second. You should never be able to pull out the second in that position. But instead, just quick reflexes and quick aim. A second, two HP onto LMC. Thanks to Sui. Bruce, he finishes off the kill with a spam from a classic. But that does like half a point of damage per shot. That's ridiculous. Now Gab, the next one up to the plate. Brucey takes her out. Zodette is here, but just can't shore up a single kill. It's three on the round for Brucey. The man who was terrorizing Gray's Harbor as of last half continues his absolute rampage. That B setup was so strong there, but uh, Sui somehow just contacts his way so deep into A <laughs> without ever being challenged. And, and there's a two agent setup there as well. It's not like there's one person and they're playing off site. There are two players actively on the site uh, in, in Tobias and Nice Aim, and neither of them spot Sui as he just walks in uncontested. That should not happen. Unfortunately, it did, and Gab back in the same position. Are they really not going to clear this jet a second time? Oh, man, they are just teasing right now. Look at this. Naughty, naughty. Oh, yeah, they're, they're teasing him, all right. Oh, no. Ooh. Please don't tell me they fake this again and leave this poor jet. I think it depends on Sui. Could have been. You can even see the muzzles right now. There's finally the first kill. Ooh. Even dashes out, but sprayed down. Wasn't able to clear the door in time. Said it's just a one for one right now. Sui lurking out mid. Will be heard by LHC. I mean, at, at least I'm assuming so. I Finally, the, the alarm bot will draw the attention. There are several players here, and with just a classic, LHC doesn't really have a lot of options. Instead, just goes down. So that's stuck against the wall. 25 HP on the site with just a classic as well. I don't see this one going very far, especially with Sui already preparing to cut off the rotations. Double headshot back to back, just like that. Thank you very much. 11 and 3 as Fort Scott pulls away. When you've got players, you know, full forcing into rifles on round two. That's how you know that they've basically written you off. I mean, Fort Scott felt so confident there uh, that Sui went up and just bought a full Phantom instead of, you know, skipping that traditional, we're going to anti-eco with the Specters. None of that. He was, he's, he came to play absolutely in this half. And and they should feel good, right? I mean, it's 11-3. They've won the first two rounds here. This is Grays Harbor's first full buy round. So if anything happens, you know, this would be the round to do. Last time they just had pistols, so... You don't have a lot to work with, but uh, they've left a lot of gaps in this defense in the first two rounds that we've seen. Oh, yeah. If Grays Harbor is going to put their foot down, it has to be during this round. If you let it get to 12, then really you just have zero room for error the entire game, and that's just never something you want to be playing with. Tobias Maximus is the one watching the smoke, but they're just springing through it. No regard for human life. This time they will have to pay for their crimes, though. LHC gets two headshots through the smoke. And for the first time in, I'm not even sure how long, Fort Scott is actually at the man disadvantage. Yeah, feels good for Grace. They have the weapons advantage as well. And the man advantage. Going for that mid control. You gotta watch out for nice aim in that cubby area. But otherwise, three towards A, so they could have a free pathway towards B here. Those shots might have given up their location though. That's oh yeah, response. alarm bot. Luckily, good for track. kind of patrolling a certain part of the map without actually having to do it themselves. Left. So really, everyone trying to kind of just getting quartered in, squeezed into the middle of the map right now, and you can already hear the footsteps all around them. Tobias Maximus will be the one to throw up the blind. He's gonna get the first. One last player left. Bruce's got to kill everyone. He may just do it. Suey alive.
but 12 seconds of the round. Where exactly can Sui actually get this bomb off to? Gav is waiting to shoot him in the back. That's seven seconds. Just gonna go for the fight. Run for your life, Zodan! You win this if you just hide! It's over, Sui not able to get the bomb down in time or get that final kill, but man, oh man. If Zodet stayed out there for just a few more seconds, that could yeah. have just been the end of it. I think she was very hungry, or they were very hungry for uh, that first kill. But, hey, you know, you don't need kills to win around. Sometimes you just got to stay alive. Exactly. Zodet has already won a fourth of their team's uh, total rounds just by not doing anything. Pretty good strategy overall. 11-4 yeah, now. That's good impact. You know, again... In the, in the post game, play, right, in the comms, play. you know, someone's saying, so Dad, you got to have more impact. You turn to the table and you say, hey, look, I am directly responsible for 25% of our round wins. Mm. You know, one of you guys has to step up, I think. That's <laughs> factual. It probably Honestly. wouldn't fly well, but mathematically, it, it works. You should be an Ooh. agent with that kind of logic, maybe. I yeah, love I'll, it. I'll go any coach. 100 Thieves, <laughs> sign me alongside Sean. I'm, I'm available. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I love can, that I sign, by the way. Uh, always happy to see Sean getting on a team there as Brucey now might just try and press this attack to kill Joy. Here. How much does that actually cover on the map here? No players detained, so no real defenses broken up over it just yet, but they all are forced into the back of the site, and Megalodon is able to open the party up right. Grace Harbor, it seems like out of nowhere, they just drop most of their members here. Only two left. Nice aim and Tobias, but they're all kind of iced off. They're stuck mid with so much space to work Ooh. out. Megalodon does get caught, caught kind of Last pants down there. Standing. Yeah, how do you not see that coming, right? Ah, uh, well. But, uh, hey. Free kill for nice aim. Can't complain about it too much. Yeah, but with the only nice aim being the last member standing here, doesn't seem to be too likely they come away with uh, two Ooh, kills that... here. Oh, and takes out the gun at the wrong time. We'll be able to get the first. Acid is right there, low HP as well, but the bomb about to go off. Not really a lot of opportunities to make more plays happen. Yeah, that Killjoy ult, you know, you doesn't always, or usually it's not going to detain anybody, but the benefit there is, is all the zoning. So that's why the kills start flooding in after that Killjoy ult is finally offline, because... This defense has had to rush out, and you have this rotation coming in, but nobody can get set up into comfortable positions. So everyone is kind of caught off guard once those, once that Killjoy ultimate comes off, once that lockdown comes off, and it becomes a, some easy picks for Fort Scott, who are now on uh, map point with 12. And a, a good buy as well. I mean, this is not great for Grays Harbor to defend their lives on. Not full buys for everybody. I think they had two or three rifles. A bulldog and a sheriff, if memory serves. Yeah, interesting enough, they actually haven't committed anyone towards mid. It's everyone just on the sites. And LHC playing with Tobias up top, trying to stop them from even getting through this smoke. But I don't know how much they can actually stop here when they are just running through. It's going to be Acid, the first man onto the site. One kill for Tobias as he retreats back under heaven. <gasps> LHC, what a spray transfer! That's what your team needs in the most pivotal of moments. And finally, wow. Grays Harbor has stuffed a push. Wow. And they just push through that smoke, too, just like you would expect them to. You know, having the flashes on their side and, frankly, having the weapons to just straight up play that smoke contact. But LHC, man, that bulldog. That bulldog plays like a dog. You. Plays like a dirty oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. And it, it just goes to show you that even if a team is losing 12 to 3, 12 to 4, that's mm -hmm. not... That's not a testament. Their players are not bad. This is not a league where, this is not a, a league where you see a lot of, uh, you know, if any bad players. There's, it's just a matter of who is playing better on the day. And although Grays Harbor is, uh, is behind significantly in rounds, you can definitely tell they have flashes of brilliance, like what LHC just did there. Transferring a bulldog spray pattern like that, that is so difficult to do. Nine seconds now left in the round, and possibly the game if they can't get this bomb down. But Brucey leading the charge right on in. It's Gabe to get the headshot with the knife. Megalodon barely gets the bomb down, but does get knife to the back. Sinks between the shoulder blades, and it's the fifth round for Grays Harbor. It got dicey for a moment there. Brucey very nearly leading the charge back in to end the game. Yeah, Grace Harbor. I, I'm, I'm about sure. To die. Ooh, go ahead. 
No, that's about it. I mean, Grace Harbor just... They're, they're on life support right now. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, you don't want to pull the plug quite yet. I don't think Gab wanted to waste the knives there, but uh, you got to do what you got to do to win the game, right? Especially up against uh, map point like that. But but to your earlier point, right? You look at this really one-sided scoreline at 12-5, to 5, but you're right. That doesn't really tell the whole story. And with the round base things like this, right? It doesn't take into account that Fort Scott might have won the vast majority of rounds, but how close did all of those rounds come down to? And sure, some of them I think have been uh, fairly fairly strong for, for Fort Scott, but if you look at it as 12-5, it definitely doesn't show how close a lot of these rounds have been. And just take a couple of 50-50s, uh, do a couple of coin tosses the other direction, and Grays Harbor probably could be in the lead uh, almost True. in the exact same scenario. So definitely gives us hope for what the rest of the series could be, but I think Suey's ready to get on to map two. Headhunter with the first. Oh, yeah. I think just you kind of have that X factor when it comes to Fort Scott. They just have certain players that can it pop off at any moment, like Suey, like um, Megalodon Brucey. on the... Exactly. Brucey has been one of the big ones, just being able to really bring them over the finish line in some of these rounds. But look how deep Tobias is actually right now. He's about to be flanking top mid. Do they actually hear him coming, though? No, they don't. It's one kill. The spray, difficult time getting the second, and now Reflex Finance, he's just waiting for it. Ooh. That's frustrating. You know, when you're hitting that phantom spray pattern and you're just so close and you're like, the, the, the spray is going to come in my favor eventually. You don't want to stop and you don't want to reset your spray, but you know, at some point left. you gotta. That is unfortunate to only get one there after such a beautiful flank uh -oh. and amazing trigger discipline too. Uh-oh, nice aim. I don't think nice aim realizes how close Brucey is right now. Brucey just spraying away. Going to tag her up a few times through the wall. Out comes the arrow. The flank from Gab. This is going well for Grays Harbor. They could actually bring this round into fruition. They stopped the plant. Four seconds left in the round. They can't actually win this anymore. Wow. Clinical. Yeah, clinical round. You gotta you gotta say. Absolutely. To come in and, and to pull out the stops like that. Because again, things got very dicey. And that was not a buy round for Fort Scott either. So... If you're Grays Harbor and you're seeing that the other team is bringing up pistols uh, into this round, you got to bring at least more than one alive there. And, and that round they do, I think, two stand into this round. They'll have to settle for two Spectres here, and it'll be a full buy from Fort Scott. But you've pushed this up, you know, three rounds in the last four. And if you win this round, you put Fort Scott back to an eco. You're looking at a 12-8 scoreline, and then we can talk about something. Yeah, I do believe they might actually be going with the Spectre there to try and bring out an Let's offense push. down, but so dead just eats the blind. This is b site taken within the first 10 seconds of the round. It looks like they've established where they have consistent takes on the side of Fort Scott. And this could just be it right here. Look at the vice grip they have on this site right now. Smokes to go down, plenty of utility to be used, and all five standing strong, standing strong able to set up in their own post plants. Suey now. He's going to have an easy headshot for the first. A second as well before rendezvousing away. Wow. It's only the one left. And Tobias, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but you have a whole lot of work to do. A good start as he does get the first. But now, oh, Brimstone ultimate to be used. Just to delay this retake even further. I mean, you have to turn the tempo up to 10 if you're Tobias at this point. And Brucey is already watching the cross. Blind it up. Rest of the team piling in. And it's a shot to the dome to end this one off. 13-6. Fort Scott taking a fantastic map one. They looked they looked wonderful, actually. Their coordination was there. Their shots were hitting. And Grays Harbor, despite, you know, putting up a mild comeback near the end there, to just get the door slammed on them. Yeah, it's very smart Valorant overall, I would say, you know, in the way that they're playing off of each other, taking these peaks together. Uh, and I think they certainly caught uh, their opponents off guard here, right? We saw a lot of opportunities on the attacking side that were kind of uplifted, uprooted from what they wanted to be. And Port Scott were very common collected the whole time, even on their attacking side, you know. And of course, to go in that final round back to the B site where they had found so much success prior, you know, I think... They knew where everyone was going to play. They knew exactly where Zodette was going to be. So you have uh, you have the knowledge, the info, you have the the execution. So, hey, let's just stop playing with our food and let's win this. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. And Suey and Brucey, really the two, the, the duo that was cre creating mayhem 
for Gray's Harbor everywhere they went. And I mean, I'm expecting that to keep up for map two. We'll see what kind of counter strats they can actually come up with. So that being said, don't go anywhere. For all of those of you watching at home, we will be off to a short break. But when we are back, we are here with game two between Gray's Harbor versus Fort Scott. We'll see you then. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are here with the best of three NJC AAE match of the week presented by Army National Guard. Big shout out to the Army National Guard for sponsoring this. It's going to be Fort Scott Gaming Greyhounds versus Grey Harbor match uh, map two. And I'm joined once again by Shakir. How you feeling going into this map two? Uh, I'm feeling great here. We're moving on to Icebox and uh, it'll be GHCC onto the defense there. So We'll get a little bit of a different start than we got in the first map, Tristan. How are you feeling? Yeah, it was good. I mean, a third, what was it 13-5, 13-6 for the first 13, map? Six, Fort Scott looking really, really tight on their strategies there. Mm -hmm. Just it, quickly being able to call the audibles. There are so many situations. Like, for example, when it was Gab sitting on the other side of that smoke. You remember you remember B-Main when he was uh, just so close to being able to shoot players walking through that. But instead, they don't, they don't sit there. They realize how many rotations can come through. They realize how bad of an idea it is to walk yeah. through that kind of that kind of utility so instead they call an audible and they avoid what could have been you know a disastrous play for them so because it's just that kind of shot calling that that makes the difference there and and if you remember on that round too we were focusing on b a lot but Sui had made their way all the way up into the a bomb site for some reason despite the fact that there were two players holding that so i think it was a combination of both of those that caused it so yeah you're right absolute smart play and good play calling that is very very adaptable as well because if you've got a wide open site like that you go for it every day of the week yeah absolutely and i think that's just intelligence to leave that to leave that one lurker on the other side of the map just mm -hmm. in case they do draw the rotations and get yourself a free site just like that but as we head into this second map we already get a few lock-ins a ton of chambers on the side of fort scott looks Ooh. like they're uh playing they're replication out here yeah. yeah. Instead, Zodette back on the Killjoy. Gap picking up the Reina this time around, interestingly enough. That went over to Tobias the last map. Instead, Tobias this time around will be titling the Viper. Yeah, a little bit of a different case to what we saw. Viper is one of those controllers that really came out of favor with this patch after taking a couple of nerfs. You know, so we see a lot more Omen and Brim. But uh, there are a couple of maps where I think the Viper wall is is so incredibly crucial. And despite the changes on that B side, I think the Viper wall is very powerful there as well. So no surprise to actually see it come out on both teams. Megalodon uh, carrying it for the Fort Scott side. I'll tell you what is a surprise to see, though. Acid on the Phoenix. I can't even remember the when's the last time I've seen a Phoenix. Whether it be competitive play, uh, collegiate level play. Or even solo queue games. I haven't seen a Phoenix in a minute now. So we'll see how Acid, what kind of tricks they have up their sleeve here. You can get the double wall going between uh, between Acid, uh, excuse me, between Acid and Megalodon. Get, Why uh, not get just use Neon at that Phoenix. point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Just wall. have them. <laughs> they stand side by side and then somebody runs through the middle with their knife out. Like, oh, come on, guys. There's We just, instead of using three agents, we have one. It's called Neon. Yeah, just you just simulated neon with three different ages. I love it. Yeah, that's. A... <laughs> I I hope that's the way that Riot devs, um, you know, kind of figure out what agents they need. Like, oh, you know, we're we're doing this setup with three agents. We'll just do it with one. Yeah, exactly. Just sitting there exactly. on the drawing board. It's gonna the next agent's gonna have like a smoke that like throws flashes out of it. Yeah. <laughs> one that just teleports onto the site, uh, plants the spike, and then gets out. That's an interesting lineup. Where's that going? Somewhere. I believe it's just going out mid. Wait, what? That huh. just went nowhere. Might have been a miss. Maybe it was something okay. intentional. Five head, uh, two five head for me. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, they've they've got full view of the of the roof at this point. As I say that though, a quick a hit. LHC is on the front lines playing the jet for the defensive side. Has the first headshot, but Brucey quickly trades it out. That jet was really the only one on the side as well. So this bomb will be going down here. They use quite a bit of C, uh, uh, quite a bit of utility to actually get it down though a nice aim has sprung through as well the wall goes down it's just a pure aim to a 3v3 right now baby it all comes down to who hits their shots and gab is gonna get the first up top megalodon does trade it back out reflex fine is also trying to cover their teammate 
And this is a game of inches right now. So close. Reflex Finest is able to get one. So close. Low HP on everyone. Gab has to hit a shot or two here at 33 HP, though. 7 HP. Megalodon finishes the job. And that plant was delayed all the way up until the final seconds there as well, courtesy of a cheeky Molly by Tobias. But not enough to win the round. Too much pressure on Gab, who got the kill earlier up in there. But ultimately, a I think great defense, right, to deny the plant up until so long, but just when it comes down to the later stages and you get those aim duels, yeah, it's part of a reason that Fort Scott took that first map, and uh, now, of course, starting on this map on the right foot. So they'll bring in four Spectres and a Marshal into what is a very long-range map. Yeah, it almost feels like Fort Scott, whenever it gets down to the wire, when it gets down to these clutch situations, they have that X factor that really mm -hmm. pushes them over the edge, and... Maybe it's Great just content. their their players being so mechanically gifted, or not really sure what the uh, what the specifics of it are, but it's working for them. And LHC wants to get some spam shots through the smoke, but Sui just needed the one tap. No armor means Marshall is an easy kill. Maybe as well rounding the corner. They're being disciplined. They're checking all their corners and making sure no one goes unaccounted for. Brucey gets a few reflexes, finest polishes it off for a second clean round for Fort Scott. This is already eerily similar to the first map. Another flawless here. It is, huh? Off the back of a pistol. Fort Scott are now 3-3 three and three on their pistols, by the way, as well. And I want to say they're 3-3 oh. three and three on flawless on the round two. Might be wrong about that one, but definitely the start of the first map uh, had yeah, that for flawless. Sure, at least two out of three. But it is, you know, the bonus, and that was their anti-eco, so... Yeah. Play your anti eco to yeah. perfection. You know, Fort Scott taking advantage of their upgraded weapons. But uh, Grays Harbor, they cannot go down 0-3 like they did on map 1 here. They have to win, I think, on this one. Just get some confidence up in their veins. And Gab, that's a great way to start. Oh, nice angle there. Asa just didn't see it coming. Tobias, though. Does he realize how many players on the other side of the shipping container... Does have some support in Gab there. LHC as well. Playing That's the mid two. area. The bomb is still over at A as well. So even if they are able to get a pick here, it doesn't really mean as much. Oh, but Sui is such a Sui is such a menace. He's ridiculous with this marshal. And he's going back for more too. Look at him taking space. Trying to get these peaks. That spike has been picked up as well. Still leaning towards that A site, but they haven't made any motion. And look how deep in mid. LHG yeah. is right now. That spike's gonna have trouble getting across. This is going to be an important duel right here. They're trading shots back and forth. The bomb has been established. Instead, back onto left. A goes Megalodon, but there is still a player here. And plenty of utility to work with. And here's the rotation getting called now too, now that that util's getting impacted. A flank from the back as well. Oh, Megalodon gets this bomb down, though. They'll have the ultimate. Perfect. Instead, LHC realizes this. Won't give him the chance. Another hedge for LHC. Are you kidding me? Tobias will finish off the round. A 3K from the Jet. Grace Harbor saying this will not be a repeat of last game. You're not reaching three, buddy. LHC was everything in that round. All that mid control hiding so aggro up tube. And, and denying the Spike's ability to get from A to B where they had already established control where Fort Scott was, I think, honestly feeling very comfortable. But that Spike was stuck towards A. So, you know, that cross is denied and LHC knows immediately that they got to go towards A. Tuck's tail, you know, runs the long route all the way back up to A and makes it just in time to catch that gap between the wall and the smoke. Perfect timing to deny that plant. Ooh. Much needed as they pick up that round three. A few shots being traded off there. Very close to a headshot, but instead, Reflex Finest takes out LHC early on in the round. That's already putting Grace Harbor at such a disadvantage considering how much work LHC has been doing for them so far this game. Nice aim, though, trying to make up for it. Has to himself. Acid trades it out. 16 HP. It's back and forth. 2v2 at this point. So he has to dash away. No bomb down just yet. Tobias stomping around. They should hear this Viper rounding the corner. One player left as Brucey gets the better of Gab there. Bomb stuck on site though. They're gonna have to push this. One enemy remaining. One v one. He shortens the numbers. It all comes down to this, and Tobias wins it. Three on the round. The clutch one v two, and it's two to two in score now. 
Craze Harbor definitely bringing heat. They're looking a lot cleaner overall as a team as well than they did in that first map too. So should be very happy with their performances overall. Obviously, strategically, you know, it has been coming down to players popping off, right? LHC in that last round. Tobias there with the 3K. But still overall a lot cleaner. They're not giving up as much space for free. They're contesting a lot more. And LHC has an op as well in their hands. Full armor, full everything. This should be a pretty chill round. And LHC comes out swinging already. That is perfect from the Jet. I'm really surprised to see the Hunter's Fury not come out after that drone tag. Usually in that situation, I mean, it's pretty easy to, to kill someone off with the Hunter's Fury at that distance. But instead, just going to use it for information. Perhaps this is uh, just to draw rotations over. I'm not sure if they still want to hit this site, but they have lost a member already mid. It looks like Fort Scott just can't seem to win that duel very easily. Yeah, and Megalodon... She's got a judge underneath as well. It's just waiting for some cheekiness. They've got the weapons oh, to make this competitive. Suey gets an opening here. This is nervous. There's one kill. The second there as well. Tobias lines up the headshot. 15 HP. The rest of the cavalry will arrive just to make sure Tobias can escape okay. Instead of getting healed back up by the Sage. This round is already being tipped heavily towards Gray's Harbor. Yes, they had the weapon advantage, but they're doing remains. a great job of making sure it stays clean. Megalon, the last one alive, does have the judge here. Might be able to take a few souls with him. With her, excuse me. And oh, wait a minute. Maybe even two here. One is there, Ooh. but Gab saves their teammate. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, that's, that's where you want to see the judge sign, typically, right? Posted up in a corner, playing tight, but... Flawless for Gray's Harbor, ultimately. Open it up with that operator. Yeah, I really love the decision to put LHC on the jet this map. Uh, LHC being on the Brimstone last map was, I mean, good for utility. But at the same time, when you have someone who can hit as many insane shots as LHC, you definitely want to give them the, uh, mm -hmm. the ability to post up in more aggressive angles. Especially with that op and give them somebody that can take the space and be so mobile. Yeah. Joke's over. You're dead. Instead, this is just such a quick hit. Now that they have the run it back, they're just going to try and spring onto the site as quickly as possible. Going to hear nice aim going up, but he can't find the shots just yet. The run it back nearly about to run out, not before taking one with him. Acid is able to start this round off right. Now nice aim trying to get the safety, but when you're tagged up inside of a Viper ult, you're just lacking any kind of vision, and you're so easy to snuff out. Two kills already. Make it a third, not before being traded out. Reflex is fine. Is able to get one, but LHC, the question is do you even want to attempt something like this when you have a valuable weapon like an op in your hands or do you just bring it into the next round yeah especially in a 1v4 situation right maybe see if you can find exits see if you can find somebody over peeking because they still have the money advantage but the Ooh, last thing you want to do is miss. drop that oh uh -oh. a couple blades wasted as well but uh yeah off for nothing and that's a third one for ford scott oh that's just insult to injury losing that op hurts i mean you already you already had the the uh, advantage in that round as far as economy is concerned but mm -hmm. losing that round and then dropping the operator to the enemy team i mean you just saved them a ridiculous amount of value i mean that swing was 9k yeah. 9k credits because you not only lose your 40 uh, 4.5k but they gain 4.5k off the back of it yeah and and if they wanted to use the op they would have saved 47.50 by doing so but they did expend three ultimates in that round and i think that's a good choice if you have the ultimates use them to get the round wins don't you know a lot of teams can sit on them for way too long and then they won't have as much usefulness so i applaud that but uh they won't have that you know to work with in this round so they got to make something happen with the weapon Ooh. they have nice swing there from lhc to get that kill back that could have been bad lhc even going for a second now the Hunter's Fury is coming out, but just up too close and personal. Brucey can't actually keep channeling that. A wasted ultimate. That's an expensive ultimate to waste. Yeah. Now Reflex is finest. Can't quick scope fast enough. Fort Scott now down a member. And that Viper's pit two. up at A. A resurrection there as well. So now four on two. Positioning from LHC. Oh. Ace. Oh my days. Taking LHC. so much space on the jet. Yeah. 
Wow. Ridiculous. Did you have this guy on Brimstone last map? Come uh, on, Grace. Don't Harper. hit on Brimmy. Put Br Brimmy on that stimmy. And Brimmy Listen, goes off. I'm a but fan no, of Brimstone. I, I, <laughs> I gotta but agree with you. Come on. This guy, yeah. this guy deserves to be on a carry. This guy is <laughs> some, some, something else. Yeah, his impact has been ridiculous it's, so yeah. far this game. Has been absolutely profound. And what's worse for Fort Scott is that they used up two ultimates there to try and keep themselves alive in that round. So remember, two rounds ago when they won, they used three ultimates. Now they used two and they still couldn't find a win. They'll have a full buy here, but they're going up against a full buy. So Fort Scott needs to show us something that we haven't seen from them yet in these buy rounds. Because right now, Icebox Ooh. on the attacking side has not looked great for them. Man, and Viper has such a good, does such a good job of just stalling out for the rotations to arrive. Although Viper does go down without getting a kill. I mean, look how many teammates are already here. Gab is ready to spring into action. The first is there. Gets the overheal. Nice aim able to swing back out. Three on the round. Looking for even more. Acid will be able to get two, though. And make it possible. The run it back is available now, but he's already getting flanked out. Run it back. Amalia wall. A lot of opportunities to heal. There we go. We'll just take the time to heal instead of kind of diving to get the bomb down as quick as possible. But now, I mean, kind of a difficult spot here. In the Getting pincered well. in on both sides. Oh. He's got to expect this from LHC. <gasps> oh, he the, leg. the gun barrel. Oh, but he's not looking the other direction. Zodette able to get a freebie. And already Zodette has more kills this round than all of last map. Yeah, welcome to the scoreboard, Zodette. It feels good to have you. <laughs> And uh, again, hey, Zodat, now responsible. Oh, that's a cool axe. Two round oh wins. My. Two round wins. So a lot of You know impact. what that axe reminds me of? What does that remind you of? Reminds me of the, uh, the God of War axe, no? The, uh, like the, the winter axe or whatever. I'm not super familiar with that axe, but just off of what my, my memory shows in my head, yeah, I could absolutely see that. Ah, really? I love the, uh, you know, Certainly one thing color. you can always credit Riot with is the skin design. Yeah. When it comes to, uh, like, as, as a former Counter-Strike player, the skin design there was, <laughs> I was uh, uh... I was reading a forum post on HLTV earlier, actually, that was somebody just absolutely going to town about how bad Valorant skins were compared to CS skins. I Wait, don't agree what? with them. Yeah, I think I'm on your side. I think Valorant's been very cre very outside the box. A lot of yeah, versatility. What do you oh, nice shock dart there. Gav's going to take so much damage here. Oh, in a second. Half I HP. Yeah, how does he know? Bruce is just too five head. Out comes the run it back onto the A site, but it's quickly laid to, laid to rest. Zodette starting to feel herself a bit more. I like that Zodette has the confidence to take the front lines too against that against that run it back instead of just hiding behind a corner somewhere. Unfortunately though, Zodette's teammate has been dropped here. Gonna try and pop the swarm grenade, buying as much time as possible. But just narrowly missing the engagements right now. About to be overwhelmed. There's only so many places you can go. Gonna get dropped. Not before Gab is able to trade one out. Oh, but they can actually see where this Reyna is by the by the overheal. Brucey able to take him out through the wall. Man, this is really falling apart quick. Yeah, Z Zedat was very, very scared there. You can see, you know, getting pincered from both sides. Very antsy, trying to pick both, and and ultimately, you know, it's a 50-50, but it feels like in that situation, you're going to guess wrong every single time. And that's unfortunate, because I think typically you pick the Killjoy, and you would expect to be able to leave that site alone. But actually, what we've seen from the last few maps is that this Killjoy definitely needs a secondary set of eyes. You know, the, the Alarm Bots, the Nano Swarms aren't necessarily enough to, to hold off the opponents. Zodad just has not looked very comfortable today um, playing Anchor on these sites. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely difficult, especially with the way Fort Scott plays. Mm -hmm. It's just very uh, aggro, they're very in your face. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as they as soon as they pull the trigger, you're suddenly you have like the entire team all over you. It's so difficult to and I, to really I, I, deal with that. I think they're even playing into that. I think they've they've seen this attribute out of Zodat and they're very much playing into this killjoy in a way that you wouldn't normally. Oh, wow. Acid has a lot of players on this B site. Three members stacked here. Meaning this A hit, I mean, if they're able to draw one more rotation, they're going to leave someone isolated. Instead, Sui, he makes this rotation himself by killing off Gab. The only one left on the site is Zodette, and suddenly everyone else is starting to flood back towards A. I'm surprised they didn't push this right away. Zodette, a couple of missed Vandal shots. Could still be an opening. 
Oh, just dancing around, trying to buy time for the rest of the team, but it's just not enough. 2v1. Fort Scott does a great job there of just making sure that they don't commit too heavily to give over a kill. LHC now holding the tightest of angles. May just get Megalodon crossing over. No vision of each other. Oh, man. Right around the corner. Oh, everyone is just an inch away from death. But the flank is there. I didn't even wow. realize that Reflex Finest was from behind. Very fast. Very, very fast. So, 5-5. Five, five. I said earlier I wanted to see something different out of Fort Scott. I wanted, you know, because they hadn't been bringing it in these buy rounds. But these last two rounds have been very, very, very decisive. Uh, and they have been in total control from start to finish. I mean, you said how... Uh, I, I guess how scared almost Grey's Harbor's been playing, right? Acid shows a little bit of presence on B, and you have three players all playing very aggro as well. Too far to make any rotation. The one thing I'm surprised about with Fort Scott is that they didn't push into A faster oh. after getting the opening pick. Wow, two headshots whizzing right by each other. No one goes down just yet, but Gav now kind of gives away the gives away the game here, knowing that they have a stinger. Best gun in the game. Oh, nice aim is right next to him. LHC can't hit the knives. No more knives available for the rest of the round. Now Acid as well. He's going to try and be the front runner onto the site. Instead, the blind is there. <gasps> Gets dodged. Tobias beautifully wow. played. The flash. Nice quick turn away. Oh, yeah. Sui, though, on the other side of the map, I mean, where the B site succeeds, the A site falls. They're still not in yet. They haven't broken the nut of the walnut quite yet. Here. Yeah, still much, a, very much a standstill. You, you're kind of feeling good right now if you're Grace Harbor. But as I say that, if you give up this kill, things could go south quickly. Two players lurking mid as well. Gab. Oh, just so close to being destroyed left. here. And a little bit closer now. Zui trying to just dodging left, right, and center. But LHC pulls out the pistol. The sidearm is good for it. The only one left, unfortunately, is Tobias. Spike planted. All these lurkers, I mean, there's there's just so many ways you can die at this point. They're already hunting this Viper as well. And they've got the money for it too, so might as well hunt. Megalodon out towards that balcony. Last That's six. In the six half. for Fort Scott. Yeah, they oh, have yeah. been playing with a lot of mojo these last three rounds. Yep, last round before the swap. Could make it a 6-6 scoreline if Grace Harbor is able to recapture some of their former glory here. I'd certainly like to see that, you know, Grace Harbor to, to come into the second half with, uh, you know, with some space to make mistakes. Right, you, you don't want to give up even a 7-5 lead to Fort Scott because if they come out and they win a pistol, Take flight. you know, and they win round two, then you're looking at a 9-5 scoreline, they win round 3 like they did back on Ascent. It's a 10-5 scoreline, it's very difficult to climb up that mountain. So Grays Harbor yeah, needs think, to come away with the win here. I think one thing that's also to note about just the team cohesion of Fort Scott is, oh, Sui! Yeesh. Another aggressive push, nets a kill, Tobias just gets caught over slightly. Acid as well, just waiting for the push, wow. but Gab on the ropes while moving domes him! Don't see that every day. Now. Can't get the bomb down by dropping the Viper's Pit. LHC will do battle with Sui here, but Sui now has the Operator. Good luck peeking that one again. You're going to have to draw out the shot somehow, some way. Avoids getting hit and just completely decapitates Sui as a result. LHC is doing everything he can, fighting tooth and nail to bring his team back into the lead here. Or at least tied up. Last player standing. Ooh, quick flicks. Gab also chiming in. One player left. It's all down to Brucey, but I mean, this is Brucey we're talking about here. He's pulled, pulled through Whoa. for his team time and time again. But, but it's now LHC. it's the best. Brucey! 3K when his team needs him the most. Back against the wall. Yeesh. Fish are friends, not food, Brucey. No oh, mercy. Man. The three on one. He turns him into a fish fry. I'm sorry, but man, that really looked like it was about to be Fort. Uh, it was about to be Grays Harbor's round. Ellie's been a... doing some fantastic work. Gab with the three K. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a very coordinated retake. 
you know, giving up that sight, smartly so, I think, and then to come in through pressuring on a couple different angles at the same time. Probably, honestly, the, the best retake I think Grays Harbor has had uh, in, in these best in these two series, or in these two maps, I should say. Uh, but, of yeah. course, you know, you can never count out somebody like Brucey, who's, who's just here to tap head. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 kills in that order for Fort Scott. Ooh. All right, LHC takes out the biggest hitter in Sui. LHC, man, this guy is an absolute menace right now. We'll get we'll get taken down by a Megalodon eventually, but one HP on the Viper should be removed from this round soon enough. Brucey is able to trade it out though, constantly making sure no teammates die in vain, which is a fantastic thing to see on the team. Three v three ensues. Just waiting on someone to give over a kill. Nice aim. We'll just get their toes burned by the Molly. Look in the wrong direction. Luckily, teammates there to cover. Acid is next one up to, up to the plate. 17 HP. Just gets bursted down. And it's all down to Brucey. Another 1v3. Where have we seen this before? We'll hear one climbing up. Nice aim. Quick to be dropped. Ahead is presented. Very nearly taken down here. But the bomb is ticking lower and lower. Has to get on it eventually. But Tobias is actually low. This could be doable. The only issue is when they're taking this long to actually take the fight. The nade is there. Yeah, this one's over. Brucey just looking for some oh. aces at this point. We'll be able to get the kills, but not the round. First pistol round, I believe uh, Fort Scott actually loses here. Yeah, got to feel pretty good there. So, you know, the, the scary thing that I was thinking about was, you know, 7-5. Fort Scott coming out winning the pistol and building off of that, but Graves Harbor shutting that down. This is their first pistol round win. Um, and of course, it did get dicey with Brucey on the 4K, but this is uh, exactly what Graves Harbor need, right? So now they're on the anti eco. You can see a little bit of a four sub Sui on the Marshall. Uh, not too much of a gamble coming from them. I think Brucey decided to pay it up for him, but overall should be a weapons oh. advantage. But look at Reflex. Yeesh, with the headhunter on Zodette. Take down that killjoy and all the utility that comes with her as well. Now LMC wants a piece of the action. We'll tag him with the Marshall. Pretty decent damage there. The question is, can they actually get far enough mid to... Oh, a shorty up close and personal. LHC taken out of the round. Crucially, LHC taken out of the round. This is the best player on Gray's Harbor already removed early on in this eco round. Gab are really going to have to pick up the slack here if they want to defend this bomb. Ooh. Can't do it. Sui even gets a headshot as well. It's down a nice aim. Already tagged once. We'll have the heal. The defusal's coming in. And Sui, I mean, what more could you ask for? Another headshot. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable thrifty. Yeah, and, and shuts down Grace Harbor's economy too. So the tough part about that, right? It was such a little investment. Basically just a marshal. Obviously, you have the headhunter onto reflex. But now you've taken any type of... Uh, eco bonus that you would have gotten from the bonus or excuse me from the pistol and and you've turned it on its head and you've taken that for yourself if you're fort scott so now this round would, would have been a bonus round for gray's harbor but now it's an eco and it's a bonus round for fort scott so yeah they they're gonna come out with the same amount oh, of this rounds is disgusting they won the pistol and they around three operator yeah jesus let's not actually get him a kill though Megalodon yeah. slides right on through. Didn't I didn't actually hear this Viper. This could be a deadly spot. Oh, hear the footsteps. How many does Megalodon get here? Especially with a teammate drawing the attention. Yeah. Absolutely no one will see this coming. They're not looking. Might hear the rotate out though. That'll be the call out. Yeah, they have full knowledge of this right now. Look at this flank. Look at Acid. Acid Second. thinking about it. Oh, a few Ooh. pot shots just to go around. So now they're trapped between a rock and a hard place. This Megalodon yeah, is this so deep as well. That was wow. doomed from the start. Wow. For Scott just closing their grip around Gray's Harbor's neck. Wow. Another another eco around, sure, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more out of that. Just something to contest. You know, and this is just now an extended bonus for Fort Scott on top of that as well, because we are four rounds in, and finally a full buy from Grace Harbor, but Fort Scott, 5.9, 6,000, 6 6.9 credits on their highest player in Megalodon, and they have an operator. 
you know, and this is a bonus for them too. So they can, they don't even have to win this. And economically, they're still going to profit. Six to nine. B-Site being heavily favored this round by Grays Harbor. It almost feels like Grays Harbor will commit their full team to a site while Fort Scott would always leave some lurkers around. In this case, Acid will be the man Ooh. on the front lines. Just gets eviscerated as he tries to peek out. Had several players blinded. But that's one of the benefits of bringing your entire team to a site hit. You just get more options when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to playing anti-flashes, making sure your teammates are covered. As we wow. see Sui just peeking out heaven. This man has no fear in his eyes after what just happened to his teammate. Still going for even more. Look how they're all pinned behind yellow at this point. And Brucey's just gets to take free pot shots. Sui Eesh. with another. Stop it, Sui. This is ridiculous. A third on the round. Make it an ace, why don't you? The bomb is already defused. Gab gets another. Megalodon gets one. And so we just chasing down this kill. They they just don't stop. I mean, the the spike was diffused and the fights kept happening. Yeah, I, there were changes right in this patch to the beast site, and the reasoning was so that the attacking sided team would be allowed and would feel more enabled to take more space, so that retake it, it would basically change the dynamic that retaking has happened. But in every single spike plant that we've seen in this game, and, and I think overall in the majority of games that I see, it's still the exact same strat. You get yellow control, you put up that sage wall or viper wall, you plant very close to default, not the new default that Riot wants it to be, um, towards the center of the site, but you still play it very close to the edge, and then you run back on that yellow box. And the issue with that is, Fort Scott just go through and they take all oh. this free space, just like Sui just did there, and for oh, a second shot, two onto Zodette. Finally, Gap puts an end. Yeah, someone stop this, man. I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this disrespectful play style. Just completely walking out. Yeah, no respect. Dead Gap. Ooh, nice shot, though. Kind of making this seem doable, but a quick flank could be the end of him, and Megalodon cashes in on a freebie headshot. Honestly, though, three kills for Gab could be worse. Really more Actually, than you could it, ask for. It really couldn't be worse, though, because Grey Harbor uh, it didn't get anywhere with that. They they barely got out of their own spawn. Uh, and you can see the respect that Fort Scott is giving them. I mean, Sui just walked out of there with an operator. No util, just contact peak, and, and picked off two before he was even contested. Yeah. Not so, the greatest of... Not uh... ideal, no. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't exactly be happy to see that if I was uh, Grace wouldn't, Harbor, uh, but wouldn't show that clip to my to my parents. I think. Uh oh, so he's back. Ooh, oh, actually misses miss. and gets pretty beat up there. Nine HP. Are there any healers on the team? No healers, so that's, that damage is going to stick. 9 HP for the rest of the round. Luckily for Sui, if there is a single weapon you want to have 9 HP on, the operator doesn't feel nearly as bad. Instead, just patrolling the top side of the map, making sure no one walks up. Has to capitulate the angle, though. That's going to be the bomb going down, but as LHC tries to walk through the Viper wall, just gets taken out. Megalodon looking for even more. Are you kidding me? How is this Viper still alive? Last player standing. I mean, they just get picked apart on Grace Harbor. It's... This, this should have never happened. Gab, the only one standing. The callouts are there. Acid just blinds him up and takes him down. Jeez. You know, when Grace Harbor's won the pistol round, I was very optimistic. You know, that's the only pistol round that they've won. This is the perfect way to start the half. Fort Scotter, they're feeling themselves here, you know, and they are on the verge of a 2-0 series point right here. Oh, yeah. One more round to do it in, and Fort Scott, I mean, all credit to them, because Grace Harbor has not looked like they've been completely lost. It just looks like they're just getting outplayed at this point. Fort Scott, they're hitting some insane shots. Sui is just on a tear right now, and a lot of these shots are difficult ones to hit for Sui. He's just not missing. Three players left between Fort Scott and a victory this game, and it looks like they're all huddled on the B side. Just trying to find some solace in each other's arms. Megalodon, though, will allow them no such freedoms. No real estate being given over. Zodette. Not even sure where to go at this point. 
has to try and depend on the teammate. A little back and forth, little patty cake. Tobias is able to get one, a third on the round as well. This is suddenly doable. 2v2. 2v2. We'll get scammed by the dart. Viper's pit is there as well. The question is, where do they plan? I don't like that oh, location. Oh, 12 HP. Oh, that was very transparent. Right at that default. Of course, of course, Brucey's is going to aim for that. Brucey just running through. This is ridiculous. Out comes the Hunter's Fury. Zodet just dancing for dear life. Blue suede shoes will not last you much longer. Megalodon closes out the map. It's 13 to 6. As Fort Scott bring this one to a close, they looked vicious as ever today. Yeah, I think an easy 2 0 for them, quite frankly, right? We talked about at map one. We said, hey, you know, the scoreline doesn't always reflect how close and competitive uh, these rounds can be. You know, half for uh, a step above for sure yeah i mean it, you just kind of showed the difference between uh the difference between a, a cold a hot start and a hot team there uh gray's harbor got off to a heart a hot start that map while uh while fort scott was just a hot team today they were just looking fantastic they were hitting their shots they were bringing all the right strategies when they needed them and it never felt like they were really overextending even though they were absolutely doing so because they, they were just playing yeah. with so much confidence they were just playing with so much so much you know they were suave as ever it was beautiful to watch and it was a lot of fun to cast so i really hope you had a great time casting as much as i did today I want to give a quick shout out as well to the Army National Guard for sponsoring this stream today. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys, and we are oh so happy to be partnered with you. So with that being said, are you, you have any closing thoughts you want to leave us out with, Shakir? Uh, Fort Scott should feel very good. Suey, I can count on one hand how many times you missed an op shot on Icebox. That's <laughs> not very rare, but uh, you know, with the, with the confidence they were playing in, I'll, I, I do hope that they come across a team that doesn't give them as much space as they were given today and, and punishes them for their over aggression uh, because they were looking very clean overall. Absolutely. And uh, we may actually have an interview ready for you guys after a short break here. So we're going to send it over right now. But when we come back, we'll see if we can get you guys a little bit more access into the minds of these teams and their players. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, welcome back. It is Tristan Cass and Shakir joining you again for pretty much uh, unfortunate news. We don't have an interview today. So with that, that will be the end of this best of three series. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. Shakir, did you have any final thoughts to wrap us up on? Uh, it's a great, great 2-0 series. I can get to bed and I still feel like I had my, my Valorant fill of exciting gameplay. So Fort Scott, they brought the heat here for the Gaming Greyhounds and uh, GHC. You know, hopefully they can piece things together for the next one because they did have glimpses of brilliance there for sure but definitely i'm sure going back to the whiteboard with a lot to look at absolutely fort scott we want to give you a personal thanks for letting shakir get to bed early beauty sleep yeah. is important <laughs> guys we gotta we gotta make sure our skin's looking right all that he gets self-care baby self-care exactly exactly that being said we're gonna be signing off for the night thank you guys so much for joining us Thank you, ARNG, Army National Guard, for sponsoring this stream. And until next time, this is Tristan. This is Shakir. We're signing out, baby.